Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. I'm always grateful. Um, I went to the Safaricom Sustainability Report launch today. This is their fourth launch, and uh, they really have made it uh, their own space. And it was very interesting. There are a couple of tweets from me um, talking about their goals. One of them was upholding the highest standards in an ethical fashion and business sense. Which, and then Bob, in his speech, was talking about local corporate governance turbulence. Um, and there was much more beyond that about how they brought down the costs um, of each of their base stations quite substantially. I think. Couldn't work out how much of that was a lower price of fuel, but uh, the, the headline, um, headline game was pretty big. China's economic growth is expected to fall below 7% for the first time since the global financial crisis in the third quarter. I've been speaking about that several times and written about it. And the numbers are just simply not credible. I think you know China's growing at around half the rate that they are currently saying they're growing at. And um, you know, that's a lot slower. It's got a three handle in my view. Um, and uh, I think I'm right on. Home Thoughts, W. H. Auden, what um, the mass media offer is not popular art but entertainment which is intended to be consumed like food, forgotten and replaced by a new dish. I like this photograph from Scott Kelly, Day 199, Aurora has danced her way out with the sun, the good night from space. Another W. H. Auden quote, man is a history-making creature who can neither repeat his past nor leave it behind. I like this photograph of my hometown, Mombasa CBD, and this photograph as well from Kenya Pick, spectacular sunset at Mwikiro fishing village on Bosini Island. And uh, December 29th last year, Ali the Navigator took us to Wasini. I'll put up his photograph. And then I'll uh, jump to a quotation, Don DeLillo from Point Omega. We're a crowd, a swarm. We think in groups, travel in armies. Armies carry the gene for self-destruction. Our bomb is never enough. The blur of technology. This is where the oracles plot their wars. Because now comes the introversion. Father Teilhard knew this, the Omega Point. A leap out of our biology. Ask yourself this question. Do we have to be human forever? Consciousness is exhausted. Back now to inorganic matter. This is what we want. We want to be stones in a field. When we did go to Asini Island, we met dolphins on the way. This is some years ago. Do have a look at the video because it was been a couple of times since. We haven't seen them. Israeli military to send six units to assist police as government imposes new security measures on Jerusalem. It really is ironic, isn't it, that it is a place of worship for so many people and no one seems to be prepared to, uh, to get on with each other. The new Middle East Russian style, the Saudis are running scared. The combined effect of the coalition of the righteous successes sends chills down the Saudi spine since they're watching their regional proxies get wiped out to the benefit of geopolitical rival Iran. This author had earlier tried to analyze the nature of the closed-door Russian-Saudi diplomacy that had been ongoing for most of the year, eventually coming to a conclusion that Moscow was trying to provide Riyadh with a face-saving retreat from the Syrian battlefield. The tacit understanding here was that the withdrawn proxy forces could then be redeployed elsewhere, perhaps to Yemen, which is inarguably seen by the kingdom as its number one security issue at the moment. The House of Saud thought it could finagle some type of extra benefit by declining to call its associated armies out of Syria, leading to a major miscalculation that is seeing the kingdom's proxies decimated course of the week and its strategic planners in full-blown panic mode. Saudi proxy forces such as the Army of Conquest must now be asking themselves why their patron abandoned them as sitting ducks on the battlefield. 
It's not realistically thought that Russia informed the Saudis in any way whatsoever of their coming military campaign. But for the Islamists on the ground being killed by Russian airstrikes, it sure seems like a possibility. And they may be seething with anger against the Saudis for being set up. Apparently, according to this article, over 3,000 terrorists have already fled Syria for Jordan, likely en route back to Saudi Arabia. And the Kingdom's security establishment must surely be aware of the threat this entails. I've spoken about that before. Couple the returning jihadis with homegrown ISIL terrorists that already struck in the country before, and a cocktail of domestic disasters being mixed before the Saudis' own eyes. Their military establishment is too bogged down along the Yemeni border to adequately focus on it. Then he goes to Turkey. The Turkish military is being stretched between Kurdistan, the Syrian border, and every soft terrorist target in between. The last thing its top brass needs is to become entangled in Erdogan's imaginary war with Russia. I concluded with Lavrov's comment, uh, which I used on the 5th of October, if it looks like a terrorist, it acts like a terrorist, it walks like a terrorist, if it fights like a terrorist, it's a terrorist, right? And I said then you could hear the squealing start immediately from Ankara to Riyadh, from the GCC to Washington, all these capitals have assets on the ground in Syria. And what is clear is that Russia is not making a distinction between IS or the moderate opposition fighting Assad, which really means our terrorists. At that point, I said President Obama is probably considering wrestling the oil price to $20 or less. In another interesting piece in Bloomberg View, Turkey has had a lax policy on its border. Um, it has given aid and comfort to Jabhat al-Nusra. It's only relatively recently that Turkish authorities concluded these were not just misguided pious youth. If it turns out to be them, this is blowback. This is regarding the strike in Ankara. For now, the Turkish government has sought to calm tensions, particularly because Turks will vote on November the 1st for new members of parliament. The election is important for Erdogan, who is hoping he will win enough of a legislative majority to make changes to the constitution that will strengthen his powers as president. Um, Erdogan said he's not sure. It was quite telling that Davatoglu said this does not mean Turkey is becoming Syria. I'm very sorry to say this may well be what is happening here. I think Erdogan is going to be consumed by the fire he lit. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro popped above 114 at 114.03. Dollar index 94.50. Japanese yen 119.53. Swissy 0.9563. Pound 153.64. Aussie um, has been all over the place today. Now at 0.7239. Um, India rupees 65 for figure. South Korean 111.45.58. Rial 389. Egyptian pound 782.68 and the Rand 13.45. And the Rand has been strengthening because of the sad Miller story. Let me put up a three month chart of the dollar index. I've been saying for a while now that I thought we were going to pull back. I still think we'll pull back a little bit further. Euro, uh, Holger tweeted a, a photograph of the Euro chart. Got as high as 114.13. And in, in a bear market, it's become a kind of safe haven. Commodity markets, Venezuela says eight non-OPEC nations invited to the Vienna meeting. Venezuela's oil minister on Tuesday, eight non-OPEC countries have been invited to an October 21st oil meeting, Azerbaijan, Brazil, Colombia, Kazakhstan, Norway, Mexico, Oman and Russia. The confirmations are coming in gradually and I'm personally calling ministers to ensure that the delegation is the adequate level of authority. In an exclusive interview with Reuters, Venezuela's longtime oil minister, um, Rafael Ramirez, said the proposal would reapply the old mechanism of progressive production cuts to control prices with a first floor of $70 per barrel and a later target of $100 per barrel. On the 23rd of March, I said the only way to bring this market into equilibrium is for massive cuts in supply. If this will not happen, and I can't see it happening yet. Um, 
And in fact, what I was saying is that of pumping less, many countries are adding more in a vain attempt to make up for the revenue shortfall. Um, on the 5th of October this month, I did write, you know, in order to respond to Putin's advance that President Obama might consider bringing the oil price to $20 a barrel. Um, and then I said on June the 15th, the wrestling of the oil price from above $100 to below $50 a barrel was always intended to wither Russia's power and send it into a tailspin, amongst others. Um, and also on, in December I said that the US has emerged as a new price setter for the oil market and certainly if they allow exports, they'll be back in the driving seat. Um, and I called uh, for this oil warfare, calling it very 21st century shock and awe, without even having to fire a bullet. Um, President Obama, while getting creamed in the midterms, has been a very subtle, skilled, hard-nosed exponent of currency and now oil warfare. This plan to undercut oil was exquisitely constructed and executed. Um, let me put up a chart of Brent and Nymex. Um, and, um, Markets turned lower again, China not helping. On the 30th of October last year, what was my best call for a while, I said, you know, the conditions are optimal for a complete washout at that time. To below $50 a barrel at that time, it was trading at 88. Um, oil slide means almost everything for sale as deals accelerate. More than $200 billion worth of oil and natural gas assets are for sale globally as companies come under renewed financial pressure from the prolonged commodity price route, according to IHS Inc. Gold, that's had a little bit of a bounce, as I said it would. We're now at um, 11, where are we actually? 1167. We'd got up to 11.73 earlier. 11.55 is now key support, with about 12.25 as the next target. An autopsy has shown the remain of Burkina Faso's ex-president Thomas Sankara, a leftist hero known as Africa Sheikh Guevara, were riddled with bullets, strengthening assertions he was executed in the 1987 coup body was riddled with more than a dozen bullets in the arms, legs and chests of the lawyer, who is no relation to the former president. The initial findings supported the family's contention that Sankara was assassinated at the age of 37. Let me put up a photograph of him. And he was certainly a, a lodestar, an early lodestar for the African continent, him and of course um, the chap who was murdered in Congo, DRC Congo, was a similar Lodestar. A bubble may be forming in sub-Saharan Africa's emerging private equity market because too many funds are targeting a small number of companies capable of, of absorbing international investment. Private equity firms in sub-Saharan Africa have an excess of $4 billion, which they are seeking to invest according to the Overseas Development Institute. Purchase prices for companies are rising as private equity firms compete to buy them. That's interesting. In the event where it became necessary to, we will do so, he said. If it becomes necessary, there will be no question of any embarrassment whatsoever. It's not a taboo to go to the IMF, so clearly Zambia getting ready. DRC Congo hangs on President Kabila's next moves as global risk insights. Will Kabila choose democracy and peace or power and potential violence? Saying further instability could spell ruin the DRC economy. President Joseph Kabila's options for the 2016 presidential elections in the DRC are narrowing quickly. A failed attempt at amending the constitution in January, allowing him a third term, resulted in violent protests in both Kinshasa and Goma, leaving 40 dead. Kabila, however, avoided being ousted, like Burkina Faso's former president, Lise Kampore, as the Congolese Senate rejected the measure. Kabila did display his administration's capacity for control by shutting down internet access and cell phone networks which had been used to organize protests on social media under the hashtag Telema, meaning stand up. In addition to curbing uh, protest communications, Kabila also employed the elite Republican Guard in the suppression of protests, which suggests that Kabila is genuinely concerned about the risk of a popular uprising. 
With the constitutional path to a third term off the table, Kabila has attempted to postpone the election through a highly complicated round of local elections. According to a measure signed into law on August 26, Congo expert Jason Stern says the tactic known as glissement or slippage is an intentional administrative complication designed to delay elections. Another possibility for Kabila has been floated as a Putin Medvedev scenario where one of his inner circle or potentially his siblings might sit for one term and then return the office to Kabila for another two terms. However, it's unclear whether or not this is a serious option for Kabila as it might it may incite further public outrage as a cheap ploy to maintain power. Public outrage is already palpable as demonstrated by the opposition and the Telema protests. Of the opposition candidates and player challenger to keep an eye on his wealthy former governor Katanga Moji Kitumbi. Katanga is an important province because of its independent streak and economic power. It accounts for over half of the DRC's combined GDP. I think the first point is that the street is infinitely more powerful than ever before and Kabila will surely find the street a formidable adversary. Watch out Angola, repression only generates more dissent. Angola is about to mark the 40th anniversary of its independence but residents are in no mood to celebrate the NPLA that is the party that has governed for more than three decades is crushing any and all dissent in a political climate that has become increasingly paranoid. In late June, 13 young men gathered to read Gene Sharp's From Dictatorship to Democracy, a book about non-violent protest. But before they finished it, the police barged in and arrested them. Two days later, two more young men were detained. They have now been held without charge for 115 days, well past the legal limit, and indicted for preparing acts pursuant to a coup d'etat because of the book's association with the Arab Spring. 10th of August 2015, I said the end is nigh for crude oil and crude oil producers from Caracas to Luanda, from Riyadh to Abuja. And certainly the stress is being felt and you can see that in the way the government is responding at the mere whisper, of the mere threat, the mere you know, indication, signal of a possible threat. The higher end consumer is a better place to be maybe over the next two or three years. This is my burg of old mutual. Given where the mining industry is and the knock-on effect on manufacturing, you might see some job losses coming through and we think that will impact some areas of the middle class consumer more than the higher end. South African all share is up 6.62% year to date and obviously SATMIN has been uh, very taken it up to index about $53,000 rand. Take a look at the six month chart midway between the low of the year and 13 but obviously global markets turning on a dime, we went from being very bullish, risk on to going risk off again. Egyptian EGX 30 is down 14.09% in 2015. The Economist has tweeted, Muhammadu Buhari is in no rush, but for Nigeria his patience might be a virtue. Nigerian all share down 13.27% this year, the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is down 11.84% this year, Jeffrey York has written an interesting article, but this is what I was surprised by. Fishing provides up to 25% of jobs and 67% of animal protein in West Africa, saying it's now threatened by foreign overfishing. In a small wooden boat named after his grandfather Samba, Diallo ventures out into the Atlantic Ocean to fish, as he has done for decades. It was once a simple life, rise at dawn, go out to sea for a few hours, bring home his catch, but these days he needs four shipmates to help him survive. They stay out in the deep ocean for days at a time, nearly 40 kilometers off the West African coast, sleeping in shifts and watching anxiously for the giant Asian and Russian super trawlers that could capsize their small pirogue in the blink of an eye. Uganda looks at Tanzania and search for the cheapest oil pipeline that that pipeline is proposed to end in Tango, where I visited with Pradeep when we went to see their facility in Tango. Um, my interview with Albert Mugo of Kenjen, the MD, uh, has been published. The YouTube link is on the front page of the website and on Rich Wrap Ups. 
The share price surged 19.888% yesterday. If you just look at the interview, you'll know why. Um, um, uh, and uh, it's giving back a little bit in the weak market today. Let me tell you what it's done now. It's trading at 9.30, down 6.53%, but still substantially higher than where it was. And I think because we're in a bear market, we're seeing it soften. But you know, it's trading on a P of less than two. And I was thinking to myself yesterday, you know, there are always opportunities in these markets. This might well be one of them. Kenji and Kenya surges as profit quadruples cash haul planned. Stock gained as much as 33%, traded 16% higher. Um, Picked Standard Investment Bank and Renaissance Capital as advisors for the planned cash call, which is set to take place in the first quarter of 2016. Finance Director John Mudani said in an interview on Tuesday. Um, moving on, uh, let's go back to the big issue, which really was, uh, which has turned out to be the issue with the central bank uh, closing down Imperial Bank. Um, 58 billion shillings of deposits are currently locked in uh, this shutdown at Imperial Bank. Um, and a couple of comments I made. I made one to the star where I said the flight quality, because people will now get worried about having their money on deposit at the smaller banks, what's been going on, what could happen. Uh, so I, I expect a flight of deposits out of the smaller banks into the bigger banks, and I think that will put intolerable pressure on the smaller banks. Um, the Central Bank of Kenya's decision to place Imperial Bank under statutory management effectively removed 58 billion shillings from circulation. And then, you know, everyone's debating with, uh, with the subject. And I said, you know, when you have flight to quality, smart money does not sit and debate, it, it leaves. Tanzania protest over Uchumi's supermarket closure. Uh, Uchumi has been losing control of its Uganda and Tanzania operations, largely expected as they scale back. Um, so that report's carried there. If you haven't uh, seen my uh, seen Pradeep's presentation at MindSpeak, that link is up as well, as is the PDF. Kenya Shilling last trading at 103.155. Nairobi All Share, just a whisker off 2015 lows, now down 14.13%. Year to date, NAC 20 closed down yesterday at a fresh 2015 low. It's down 22.18% year to date. Markets under tremendous pressure, uh, particularly the banking sector. Have a look if you need to follow these markets, by the way, rich.ca.ke, get a password, it's free. Then go to Richline, you can watch uh, the expert board, which allows you to watch an individual stock, what's the demand, what's the supply. The buy side prices, the sell side prices is very helpful. It's as quick as your broker. Um, and the normal board gives you a picture of the whole market. Um, Quartz Africa, not even Obama could save Kenya's struggling tourism industry. And uh, basically, there hasn't been a bounce, and it's not coming until the second half of next year if it comes then. Um, market Safari on, you know continues its merry way, it firmed 0.33% yesterday to close at 15. Luchumi are doing some asset sales, it's holding on to 10, had quite a bounce since Kipitich was appointed. Scan Group fell 4.76% to fresh 2015 low of 25 yesterday. Equity Group down 2.24% yesterday. Uh, uh, KCB down 2.312% yesterday, but there, there's much more follow through selling today. Co-op bank down 2.631% yesterday. Banks coming under pressure. Diamond Trust down 2.512% yesterday, but falling quite hard today. Kengen, we went through those results, fully earnings. I popping 307.5% profit after tax gain. It's an interesting model and it's quite de-risked because they're able to pass through the FX. Um, so it's a cost plus model. Uh, uh, capacity, uh, uh, cost plus your margin. The more capacity you put in, the more money you make. And I think it's actually a very interesting share, at less than price P ratio of less than two. ADSS slumped 8.33 percent to close at a fresh all-time low. Uh, pretty interesting times over here at the moment. We've got to keep an eye on the ball. Lots going on.